guys, how's it going? It's Al, DraftKings Week 6, and we got to talk about five of the top stacks that I think you should be focusing on on this slate. It's an 11-game slate. Obviously, there are 22 stacks. No, I am definitely not going to talk about all of them. I'm going to isolate the five. One of them is the puke stack, but this week, it's not so bad, right? It's not like it's broccoli when you're a five-year-old where you don't want any part of it. Like, it's fine. You're like, okay, like, we just, we took some broccoli, and we ground it up in the Cuisinart, and we put it in the brownies. So you don't even taste it. So it's like it's like broccoli chocolate brownie stack is the number five stack on the week. You'll see. It's not so bad. It's actually pretty good. But thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. If you wanted to get access to the cheat sheet, which lives in our Discord, comes out every single Friday afternoon. That requires that A, you join the Discord. Go to smizzle.tv slash Discord. And B, you become a channel member here on YouTube or a subscriber on Twitch, both cost $5 a month, both get access to the cheat sheet uh, and our fabulous community in Discord approaching 10,000 members at this point. Go to smizzle.tv slash join if you wanted to become a channel member here on YouTube and get all the perks, all the great emotes, access to the Discord VIP community and the cheat sheet every Friday. Appreciate you guys being here. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notifications bell, and let's go. He's a legend. The Week 6 Smiz Gang Listener League is posted. It is the best tournament on DraftKings. $10 center, three max entry fee, $45,000, and absolutely no rake at all. No service fee from DraftKings. Uh, it's a give back to our community and uh, for as amazing as you guys are. Go to smizzle.tv slash links. You will not find this game in the lobby. You need to go to smizzle.tv slash links. That link again is smizzle.tv slash links. You'll find the link to the Listener League as well as the Fantasy Football Channel, my second channel that you can go watch the recap video to see how I do every single week. My cash game lineup, tournament lineups, underdog, everything else uh, as well as we go over the winners from the Listener League and shout out the top 10 finishers. So make sure you get your seat Today, it has filled the last two weeks early on Saturday, so don't wait until Sunday morning to get it. Take a look at this 11-game slate. We start with Baltimore and Tennessee, total of 41.5. Niners go to Cleveland, 37.5, keeps falling. Gross. Panthers and Miami, 47.5. Very fast-paced game here. Miami favored by 13.5, and, and it may hold down the amount of people on them, but like probably not because they're still Miami, and they're still amazing. Uh, the Jaguars, four-point favorites over the Colts, 44.5 is the total. They're pretty standard. 44 to 46 are, are just, that's normal. Sub-40 is ugly. Vikings and Bears, Bears, two-and-a-half-point dogs at home, 43-and-a-half here. No JJ, that's making this game harder to, dis to decipher, but also there's value. It's just people don't know if they want to go after Addison in the mid-fives or uh, somebody like Osborne in the fours. I think the easy route is to just say Hawkinson and pay up at tight end. Uh, Seahawks go to Cincinnati, 44 and a half total there. Falcons, 42 and a half total against the Commanders uh, with both defenses, right? Like these are two of the teams and any quarterback named Jones, right? Stream defenses against any quarterback named Jones, the Washington Commanders or the Falcons. And now we got two of them playing each other. Something has to give. Saints go to Houston uh, in the dome there, 42 and a half. Patriots go to Vegas, 41 and a half. Eagles and the Jets, 40 and a half, really low total in this game. Slow, sloggy, bully ball, a lot of runs. Uh, the Rams, 48 and a half, pace up situation for the Cardinals. And Detroit and Tampa Bay square off in a defensive battle at 42 and a half. Steve, thank you for the 53 months. Appreciate you. Uh, let's head over to our first stack. Obviously, on the cover was Tua Tungavailoa and the Miami Dolphins. It's expensive, but does that really matter this week? Like, at all. There's so much value. There's value you can get at wide receiver. There's plenty of running backs. There may be a couple, like a couple. It's rare that we get a sub-5K running back on draft. Jaleel McLaughlin was 5K. But there are a couple of guys that are sub-5K that you could go get after this weekend on DraftKings. And I kind of feel like the uber chalk this weekend, because of Devon Achan going on IR and missing that Raheem Mostert is going to be like one of the most played plays on the slate. At 6,400, he should get the lion's share of the touches. He's not going to get 100%. So don't think, well, A-chan's gone, so now he's going to get 35 touches like David Montgomery does in Detroit. That's just not going to happen. Other guys are going to get it, whether it's Salvan Ahmed, whether they bring Jeff Wilson Jr. Uh, off of IR uh, and start him for this, or not start him, but play him in this game. Uh, Ahmed is the other guy who's active. They have, you know, bodies that they can give the ball to at running back. But 
20 plus touches incoming for brother Raheem. So if you wanted to leverage off of all of that, you could easily go to Tyreek Hill, the breaker of slates. Nine targets again, 35 points, 33 points, 47 points. He's Brett Saberhagening his way through this season. So on odd weeks, he's had tournament winning type days. And on even weeks, he's been quite pedestrian. So if you're going with the even and odd narrative, right? Narrative Street is absolutely in shambles after the Las Vegas game where everybody thought that Devontae Adams was going to go off King against the Green Bay Packers in a revenge game. But apparently he has no revenge in his heart. Uh, and it was a thankful game. So we must rebuild Narrative Street. So let's start with the even and odd narrative. For abs Don't listen to that, by the way. You said he wasn't going to do anything because it was an even week. No oh, my God. Unders I need you all to understand. I make a lot of jokes. Not everything is serious. Uh, and so that wasn't serious. <laughs> okay? That, that was not at all serious. Jalen Waddle, 7,600. Like I said, double stacking is the way to go. We know why. I've got a pinned tweet in the... Or pin tweet. I've got a pinned post in the Discord... Uh, where I went through all of the numbers. Uh, Game-breaking player has not broken a game yet. And entirely possible to get there with this double stack and pay up to be contrarian while also leveraging off of the ownership on the one side. And we have a couple of options at wide receiver that we can go to. Mingo, starting to get a lot more targets, eight, seven, and six. The last three weeks and uh, the man who's been inevitable has been Adam Thielen, 11 catches, seven catches, 11 catches, seven catches. So I guess... Once again, with the even and odd weeks, the last four, I guess he's going to have seven catches, right? Because that's just, that's how it happens. He's going to have, lock it up. Seven catches for Adam Thielen this weekend. Also not serious. Going over to Cincinnati, we got Joe Burrow as the secondary stack on the slate. Yes, I know there may be weather here. If it does look like it's pouring, if it is like 40 mile an hour winds, uh, or if Joe Burrow has some sort of setback in practice, don't play him. Right now, it does look like a really good spot. As Seattle is one of the teams that we want to attack with opposing passing games. They're not good in the secondary. And we are also waiting to see if T. Higgins is going to play or if T. Higgins is going to not play. Limited participant in practice on Wednesday. I'm recording this video probably during their practice on Thursday. So monitor practice reports. If he goes, this is a fantastic double stack uh, with not just him, but Jamar Chase. If he does not go, Tyler Boyd should see uh, basically the same amount of work that he gets when T. Higgins is there. Uh, seven targets without him, seven targets with him there. Basically the same type of thing. The guy who ran a lot more routes, um, saw a lot more targets. Y'all did not like this call last week, but the Croc Hunter did work. Here's the thing. Whenever there's an injury, teams don't want to change multiple players' roles, okay? It's called a next man up league for a reason. Because they don't want to shift everything around. Tyler Boyd is their slot guy. T. Higgins plays outside. So last week, T. Higgins was out. Tyler Boyd still played his role. He did not see a role change. But Trenton Irwin did. Similar things are happening probably in Minnesota where T.J. Hawkinson's going to play his same role, play his same amount of snaps, run the same amount of routes. Um, you're going to have Addison playing the same amount of snaps, running the same amount of routes. The guy with the role change from what it appears to be is KJ Osborne, who's going to play in JJ's X spot. Whether or not he can earn targets and win out there is a different scenario. I'm not saying he's going to get JJ's targets or anything, but like focus yourself on who that next man up is, who has the biggest role change in the offense. And for Cincinnati, if and when, your if then statement, if T Higgins is out, then Trent Nerwin, the crock hunter, he's the guy who steps into that role uh, instead of Tyler Boyd. Let's go over to Underdog Fantasy. If you have not claimed your free $100 uh, on Underdog Fantasy, why not? Use promo code Al Smizzle, A L S M I Z Z L E. And on your first deposit to the site, you can claim up to a first, up to a $100 first time deposit bonus to the site. I'm just going to focus on this one game. We're going to stack Tua with Tyreek, uh, and we're going to go with Adam Thielen as well. Higher, higher, higher. Lowers or sharper. I don't want to root for punts. $100 to win six. Submit that. Make sure that you claim your free $100 today. Over on, It's unavailable. Oh, I hate everything. Why did they change this? <laughs> I got to refresh. Help. Where'd the game go? Did they remove them entirely or was that just an old line? Okay, fine. We're going to go with Tua. We're going to go with Tyreek. Let's do a touchdown one if we're going to do that. Let's go higher than this. Let's go. Where is he? I, I need Thielen coming back. I need Thielen coming back. Uh, it, we said he's going to have seven catches, so over five and a half. Uh, and we're going to go over to a 275 yards. Boom, for $100. Try and win six. Confirm my picks. There we go. It worked this time. 
fabulous. Go claim your free hundred dollars today on Underdog Fantasy. Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars square off against Indy. He's been good, but not had any tournament winning days so far this season. This is another leverage stack because a lot of people are going to be riding the Travis Etienne chalk. Five box running back playing at home over 20 touches. Way more involved in the passing game this year than he was last year. Gets the goal to go snaps. All the sort of thing. Had a monster game last year. Uh, and they come back to their home away from home, Jacksonville, uh, with their main home being in England. So... Trevor Lawrence uh, could be a really good leverage play off of ETN if he does project to have a high percentage of players on him. And I do think he will coming off of a 31 uh, output, 31 opportunity game, which leaves us with guys like Calvin Ridley, like Kirk, Zay Jones, assuming that uh, he plays this weekend, just is that guy that gets all the love inside the, once they get in the red zone, he just looks for Zay Jones constantly. So you have touchdown upside at 4,100 there. Uh, and at tight end, Evan Ingram as well at 4,500. I'm not going to click on that because I know what bit I'm going to do if I do it. So I'm going to avoid that. So like, it's a good stack, isn't it, bruv? I kind of like it. Go with this. Plenty of bring back plays on the other side. Heading to Matthew Stafford. And we're going to get over to the solver in just a bit to kind of build our lineups on this one through these quarterback stacks. And we're going to take a look at the Sims to see how it views things early Matthew Stafford only five touchdowns but as much as he's throwing it and as many yards as he's completed for and he's not been inefficient yes he's got five interceptions that sucks but like he's not been bad this year and now guess what he actually gets a boost because he gets some guy named Cooper Cup back in the lineup had a fantastic day last week and I think that this stack is going to be good for a couple of reasons one we know where the targets are going to go. The Rams just traded uh, Van Jefferson away. Tutu Atwell slides into that wide receiver three role. He's 5,100. At tight end, Tyler Higby at 4K. Not going to get the service that he got last year or in the absence of Cooper Cup, which probably means that the two biggest target earners are 9K for Cooper Cup coming off of an eight catch, 118 yard game, squaring off against Arizona, who is extremely gettable, and Puka Nakua, even with the presence of Cooper Cup, still earned 11 targets last week, did score a touchdown, seven receptions for 71 yards. Do you think people are falling over themselves to pay 17K for this duo? Is there anybody on Arizona that you can go get like Marquise Brown has been extremely solid. Didn't practice Wednesday with an illness. We'll see how that goes. Uh, they are missing James Conner. So we have one of, and I'm not going to make a statement on which one it is right now because we thought it was going to be Amari DiMarcato. He's 4,900, but then the team put Keontae Ingram in the number one spot on their depth chart. He's 4,500. Zach Ertz, Pretty sharp to bring back or use a tight end in your double stack and bring back. He's still 3,600. And as I said, Marquise Brown, Wilson's 38. Like there's plenty of cheap bringbacks to kind of make this work. And I wonder how many people are actually going to target this. So we're going to get a low percentage combination of three players in our double with high salary paying up to be contrarian because at those prices at wide receiver, people are going to prioritize Tyreek Hill. Jamar Chase is going to pop against uh, Seattle with or without Higgins. Uh, Devontae Adams, maybe. A.J. Brown always presents well in um, in any sort of projection system. So like this gives us a contrarian way to go about things. And the fifth stack of the week, like I said, broccolis and brownies. Minshew magic. This is your bargain stack, in my opinion, of the week with with Minshew being where he's at, with Pittman getting more service, possibly, right? The passing game getting more service, let's say, as they go from being a super run-heavy team uh, with AR-15 with the amount of runs he had, then pounding Zach Moss. Uh, I don't care about the running back situation right now. We'll get into that later in the week, probably tomorrow on the Lineup Builder Show. Uh, but more consistent targets. Minshew can make it happen, and they're going to have to do it through the air, especially against Jacksonville. So Pittman becomes a good target. He's only 6,300. Josh Downs has seen 25% of the target market share on all of Gordon, uh, Gordon uh, Gardner Minshew's dropbacks. So he gets a massive upgrade. 12 targets in this game, six of them, all of them coming after AR-15 left. 4,100 for him, one of the better value plays on the, on the week. Pierce, not really super on my radar, but did get six 
uh, sorry, seven targets. The first game that Minshew started in the absence uh, of AR-15 back in week three. If you wanted to play one of the tight ends, the problem is knowing which one's going to get it because they kind of cycle their tight ends through. It's a gamble between Granson and Ogletree and Mo Alley. You know, like uh, the, you just don't know where they're going. But this double here, very solid and obviously can bring it back with anything on Jacksonville that you want. Let's head over to the solver. And if you do not have an account over at the solver.com yet, use my link at smizzle.tv slash solver. I've got all the same rules plugged in here. If this will come up here, all the same rules here. Let's go to our stack rules, stacking my quarterback with two of their pass catchers. We're going to make sure that it has a bring back. We're going to have a secondary stack through the wide receivers. Not going to use a running back. You can allow it if you want by including, like you say, if, uh, if you wanted the chargers, which are not on this slate, you could just say include and then put LAC. Uh, but I can't because they're not on the slate. But like, if you wanted to include like SF, right? You can say, I want Christian McCaffrey to be in Purdy stack. So this will allow McCaffrey to be in those Purdy lineups and you'd put them down here as well and exclude them from that one up there. Uh, let's get over here and run these lineups with these stacked quarterbacks that we have talked about on this slate. Optimize 150 lineups. It's going to build them for us based on our rules and it's going to spit out whatever it spits out. Make sure that you spend a lot of time coming up with your allocations uh, and everything else that you're looking for, the combinations and everything that you wanted to have. Now let's take a look over at the Sims. Cash rate, you sort by whatever you want. Uh, I've sorted by ceiling here. It likes the Minshew lineups for ceiling in terms of highest cash rate. And this is sorted for the slant. Highest cash rate, it likes the Minshew lineups as well. This is for large field mass multi-entry. And in terms of ROI, the highest lineups based on these stacks is all these Stafford ones. For all of the reasons I mentioned with the low percentage that these guys are going to be played, Stafford may be the way to go in large field tournaments. So go check out everything that they have over at the solver, smizzle.tv slash solver. Look out for another video right there. He's a legend.